Welcome to the GDC Technology Theater here at the NVIDIA booth. We're going to get started. Uh, I'd like to introduce Chris Duran from Geomerics. He's going to talk about CUDA and the future of dynamic lighting. Take it away. Okay. Thanks, Jessica. Right. So I've got a <coughs> fairly short talk here. Um, this was going to be a much longer talk, but it turns out we've also got some pod time at the moment, so I'm going to cut it a bit shorter, and then people that are interested, I'm going to send you around to our pod, which is just round on the far side of the NVIDIA theater. Uh, so all we're going to talk about is a few minutes to introduce Enlighten and describe the basic principles behind it, talk a bit about the CUDA runtime, but I'll probably skip most of the technical details for that because we have an engineer at the pod who can go into more, de into more depth and talk about some of the, uh, the new research we've been doing on the, on the CUDA platform. That's real-time real area lights and dynamic object radiosity, as we call it. So, <laughs> what, it, what is Enlighten? Enlighten is real-time global illumination. So that means all of the bounce light in the world is computed in real-time on today's consoles and, and PCs. You can use it dynamically in the game to create all sorts of interesting effects when you shoot out lights or exploring with a torch, all the bounce lighting is, is updating correctly. And you can use it in the workflow to dramatically improve the iteration time to make the artist's life a lot easier. So here are some of the, uh, the big titles that have uh, uh, been built using Enlighten so far. Uh, last year saw the release of Battlefield 3 and Need for Speed. Uh, both built in the Frostbite engine, which uses Enlighten for its uh, radiosity. Uh, there was an update to EVE Online that also uses it. And there's a new title coming out shortly called Quantum Conundrum that uses Enlighten in a really interesting way, T totally different from the, the type of effect that's been achieved in the, in the other games. So first of all, a really, really basic introduction to what, what is radiosity. So this scene at the top has got a direct light casting some shadows, and then the rest of the image is just filled in with a global ambient tone. And it looks very flat, it's very sort of old school gaming. What's missing is all of the subtle shadows in here that the, the human eye uses to get keys off for depth and, uh, and, and all sorts of interesting effects. And these sort of soft shadows underneath here. That's all the, the radiosity, and this is the stuff. Everything here is what Enlightened fills in in real time. So when we set out to design Enlighten, we had three main goals in mind. We had to hit the same quality of lighting that can be achieved through, uh, through a pre-render pass or a, a you know, static light map baking. We had to get that level of quality, but we needed the flexibility of dynamic lighting so that all lights in the game could be fully dynamic. We also needed to give as much creative freedom to the artists as possible so that we didn't want to design a tool which just took in lighting and spewed out some results, and the artists had no way of tweaking it, no way of, of going in and messing with the innards. So we, we've made Enlightened extremely tunable so that artists can play with it in interesting ways. And with that combination of quick, iter quick fast iteration and control, uh, has, should, we wanted to make sure would be used to raise the, uh, the quality bar to give a lot, much greater sense of atmosphere in games. So the basic philosophy was We'll start off by targeting the current generation of hardware. So we use all the techniques that are standard techniques on PS3, 360. Light mapping techniques for your geometry. And a lot of the hard calculations are taken care of up front and put out, taken out of the way so they don't mess up in the game. We keep the technology very modular, so we separate the direct and indirect lighting. They have separate passes. And we separate out static and dynamic objects. They have different lighting solutions for them. We keep the, light, the runtime as lightweight and simple as possible, which makes it very easy to transfer it to new platforms as they come along. And we can see that in particular with the CUDA implementation. We, as we know, on the current console cycle, memory and compute are very contested resources. Obviously, that's far less the case if you're running a PC game uh, and running it on, on CUDA hardware. But we had to put in quite a few optimization strategies to make sure that the memory could be managed that the compute resources were not too intensive. So we use a simplified lighting mesh to simplify the calculations. We use temporal coherence so that if lights don't change, you don't do any new computation. And we can stream the calculations in and out using a, a system-based approach. Uh, we originally thought Enlighten would run on the GPU when we first designed it. 
But then when we started working with the current consoles, we realized there's just no room on the GPU, so we put it onto the CPU. And what we've now done is actually put it back onto the GPU, which was kind of where we thought it would, uh, or we thought it would end up. And it also, we had to scale to all possible sort of game scenarios. So from interiors, sort of simple interior buildings, closed uh, outdoor environments right through to entire cities. And today you, you can light an entire frostbite level as a sort of 4K by 4K map. That can be all updated dynamically in real time using Enlighten. So another key thing we had to do was put the artist in control. So obviously instant feedback gives the artist a lot of ability to mess with things and tweak things. But we also gave them a whole load of different controls so they can con create any sort of look they like. All of the, the things that uh, you, you would sort of think of as being physically set, we allow the artist to go in and, and change. So red walls can bounce off as if they were blue. Any surface can become emissive. So you can completely sort of break the laws of physics. And, and one game that's really pushed that is Quantum Conundrum, where they've, they've used Inline to create this, these different dimensions, as they're called, where they set up a completely different lighting environment when you click to a different dimension. And they use lots of sort of hidden area lights to create this very colorful, overdriven, cartoony look. But again, it's all fully dynamic. We also have to keep the, the runtime as lightweight as possible, so we have to sort of basically serve as many different runtimes as possible, from mobile right up to current gen hardware, PCs, Wii U, the, the whole range. And one of the ways we do that is by ensuring that Enlightened can cater for all possible types of dynamism in the game. Uh, if you want to, you can use Enlightened just to bake out static light maps so you can get all the run, runtime, the workflow benefits, and save them out statically. This is kind of for low-end mobile devices. And then if you pro go up this line here, right at the top end, you've got high-end PC games where Enlightened's updating completely dynamically on, on the GPU. And we, there are games in development at every point along this curve uh, at the moment for us. So that's our, our way of reaching all games. We kind of set the current console as our baseline. We need to be dynamic on them. Anything that's beyond current console hardware, we can just do more on. Uh, and we've, we've prepared a whole load of new features take, to take advantage of the, the CUDA path in particular. And then you can scale back to mobile devices with a mixture of some lights being dynamic, some being static. And as the, as the mobile devices, or Tegra type devices, keep on improving, they'll eventually catch up, will very soon catch up to our, our base point, and again, everything will be, will be dynamic. So, just moving on to the, the CUDA runtime. So what, what is CUDA? Well, it's, I'm sure you all know, it's, uh, it's the most advanced general purpose GPU language. Uh, a lot of applications in uh, high performance computing, scientific applications, and starting to, starting to get used in, in graphics as well. Uh, and it's just basically a C light language, but for massively parallel execution. Your work has to be broken down into kernels, and they just get sort of fired off on the, on the GPU. And you need lots of, uh, lots of threads inside these kernels to really fill up the graphics card. But that, that, that sort of kernel approach fits very, very nicely with Enlightened's way of breaking the world up into systems. So it, it's a very natural map onto, onto CUDA. Uh, CUDA interoperates with uh, D3 and OpenGL. And one of the big advantages of having Enlightened running on the CUDA hardware is that we can immediately read from the shadow maps of the direct light computes and feed that information straight back into the Enlightened bounds so that the bounce is updated within a single frame tick. So it's, that makes things extremely fast. There are, there are a couple of minor gotchas, but um, we're working with NVIDIA to try and make sure that these, uh, these problems go away. It's a couple of missing texture formats, but we, we kind of have ways around that. Uh, and the, the context, which can be quite expensive, that generally that means you just want to do it once per frame. The runtime itself for Enlightened has two components. There's the input lighting. This is the taking all the results of the direct lighting uh, and munging them together in a suitable framework. This is all can all be done on the 
in the, the DirectX path. And then we do a switch to balancing the light around, which is when we turn on the CUDA path, take all of the data from the input lighting, take the data from the previous bounce, add that in, bounce it all around again, uh, and then turn the results back out. And that all takes place in, in a single frame. Um, so I'm going to skip some of the more technical details because our engineer will very shortly be present and he's going to be demonstrating lighting around there on the pod. And uh, it's probably much rather than me just uh, go through these details, it's much better if you just go up and ask him questions directly. So I'll run on to a demo now. Um, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to skip the, skip the demos and just do them all at the end. I'll just carry on talking. Um, We've been working closely with NVIDIA on two new bits of research, uh, to, which are CUDA only, to add on on top of the current Enlighten workflow. One of them is real-time area lights. So Enlighten can already handle area lights in that any piece of surface in the world can become an emitter, and it'll create soft shadows off the other static geometry in the world. What we want to add in is the ability for the direct lights to also become area lights so that you can get much more interesting, more film-style lighting effects in, in the game, particularly if the game's running on a high-end high -end PC. So we want to be able to get interesting, nice, soft shadows from, uh, from direct lights. There's lots of various techniques being applied to that, and the kind of the bog-standard one for games at the moment is percentage close to, close to filtering, which is kind of okay, but it's not really physically correct. Uh, it doesn't get you the same results you get if you actually went out and ray traced the, the area light. Uh, so we, we were looking around at, uh, at new techniques. We wanted to uh, eliminate a whole lot of ones that uh, were sort of fixed size. We wanted to eliminate ones that didn't allow multiple blockers. So we, we wanted to make sure you could cast a, one occluder would cast a soft shadow onto the next dynamic object. And quite a few techniques don't, take, don't allow us to do that. Obviously, we'd all love to do it ray traced, but that's just still a little bit too expensive to really think about ray tracing a full area light in, in one frame. So, let's see if we can pass that. So, we, we played around with uh, back projection techniques, which, which look to do the, the job there. They're well motivated, they uh, are sufficiently fast that they can really be pushed hard on, on CUDA, so they really can work per frame. They use a sort of an interesting effect where the results of the shadow map are then u are used to back project fake geometry onto the area light, and then a, a bit mask is applied to that per pixel in the in the world, and you then just add up the various pixels, and that gets you the uh, the degree of illumination. Uh, and then, as as usual, uh, some some filtering and generally messing around and cleverness gets everything uh, running nice and fast. Uh, it's not the simplest piece of uh, CUDA code we've, we've written, uh, as we're certainly really trying to stress test what can be achieved uh, with, with CUDA graphics. But it's, uh, it's, it's, it's genuinely fast. It gets really nice results. Um, here you can see as you, as you vary the size of the area light, we're getting precisely the right, physically correct soft shadows there. And uh, if, if you ask Graham after, the, after this talk, he'll be able to show you this demo running. Uh, the other main technical innovation we've been working on uh, is what we call participating dynamic objects. So currently, the way Enlighten works, you, you do this pre-processing step based on all the static geometry in the world, and then everything that's dynamic picks up radiosity but doesn't reflect it back into the world. And that's absolutely fine for... 80, 90% of games, you know, in, in an area like this, all of the characters walking around would all be dynamic objects, and all of this sort of stuff here would be fixed static objects, and that's absolutely fine, fine balance to strike. But there are times in games where you want much larger objects to come into view, and what you really want to do is have them also cast, uh, affect the radiosity and block it and bounce light off them. So... <clears throat> We've created a new technology that runs on top of Enlighten that allows the large dynamic objects in the world to interact with the radiosity, 
to block off radiosity and occlude it from other areas and to bounce light back into the world. And this all runs extremely fast on CUDA. Here's sort of what I'm talking about. This is what standard lighting would do if this blocker here is a dynamic object. The blue light over there is the radiosity from that is bouncing back into the world and not being occluded by it. But with our new participating dynamic objects, that light is blocked off. So the easiest way to show that, it will be to just run through a demo. Which is this one. So this is a demo that we've built for uh, for GDC this year. As you can see, it's been built in, uh, in Unreal. Enlighten has a, a full integration into Unreal, and uh, all of the, the CUDA paths are all, uh, are all available there. Um, I'll just wait for it to load up. Okay. So here's standard scene. As a, uh, this is also standard in lighting. So just fast forward the uh, the sun, we get a completely dynamic day night cycle. Uh, you can see if I turn off in lighting, what the direct lighting is doing in this case is casting uh, direct light over these parts of the world. And then lighting fills in all of the bounce light in the shadows. Oops. So this enlightens filling in everything else here. And as we go over to the nighttime scene in particular, where a lot of the light is more localized, you can see that's with enlightened turned off, kind of the old, old school doom type look. And that's with it turned on. All of the light sources here are, uh, are dynamic. So as you make that light swing, all of the radiosity is bouncing around correctly from it. Again, if I turn it off, that's the direct light. That's all of the bounce light. Weapons fire also contributes to radiosity. And that light can bounce around sort of all, all throughout the world. Uh, objects in the world can become emitters. So this surface here is emitting light and bouncing it onto this wall over here. And these can all be updated dynamically in the game. So if I change the color there, bounce is a different color, change it again. So as well as giving sort of interesting gameplay possibilities, you can see how this is a really good art tool because they can just very, very quickly go in, tweak the look of, look of a level to get the precise, the precise look that they're after. Let's go over here. You can see some of the dynamic objects. So dynamic objects are lit using the same lighting technologies and that in light as well as returning all the surface light returns a set of probe values in space and that ensures that all dynamic objects correctly live in their in their world and if you so they, they look like they are fully embedded if I pick up an object like this one I'm just, uh, carry it around so this as you move it around, this picks up all of the different types of radiosity throughout the scene. Again, it's quite a nice place to see a day-night cycle here. Uh, all the lights are, this light here is a dynamic one, so as you move that, all the light from it bounces around, and there's some more ones up here. This one here. There we go. And if we stand here, I think this is a view our artist was particularly proud of. If I just go through another day-night cycle and bring it round to, round to dawn, you can see the, uh, as the sun starts to come in, the light bounces around. And you get a much, really sort of interesting uh, effect as the world updates in a nice, realistic way. I 
I just go back up here, you can get a sort of sense of the level. So, again, th this entire level here is all being lit fully dynamically, including all of the distant geometry. That the city in the distance is all being lit as well by light probes. And if I uh, just go on, back to night time, you can see how it all, everything sort of changes the way you'd expect it to. So if we now go down here, we can trigger the bot fight. So that now all of the bots that are running around, they all have got torches attached to them. So you get this much more interesting look to the game. If you turn the lighting off, for example, it goes back to that. Again, very Doom-like, but not, not very interesting to look at. But with all the, the lights turned on and all the bounce light turned on, the whole effect is much more interesting, much more dynamic and immersive. And as before, Who's that? Yeah. All of the lights themselves are also dynamic, animatable. So I'm going to be shot off. Yeah. So you can see how this is really quite gives it really interesting gameplay to uh, sort of nighttime-based first-person shooters, for example, where as you move lights around, you can completely change the look of an area. Now, this is the room where I want to show the latest stuff. So if I just find the right place, trigger an animation. This is Enlighten as it runs today. So these large objects here pick up the radiosity. So they look OK, they look sensible, and they're being lit by the direct light. But they're not bouncing any light back into the world. If when I turn on the CUDA path, you can see we've got this much more interesting effect where the colored containers are all dynamically bouncing light back into the world. So over here, for example, you can see if I pause the animation there, the light there is now shining on a blue surface. We've got a whole load of blue bounce light back into the world. And if I carry on and freeze, the, freeze things there, now the light's bouncing onto the red surface and bouncing red light back into the world. It's been somewhat overdriven for the purposes of this demo. Um, but this is all fully dynamic. And even though these, these animating objects are on a, a fixed path, that, that's in no way a restriction. These can be moved, placed anywhere in the world, and all of the radiosity will update completely dynamically. So this is a, this is a CUDA feature uh, that uh, so we've just developed. It's the first, first time we've shown it. And we're starting to talk to developers now about ways to get these, this type of effect into their game. It, it, it'd be really useful, you can imagine it for boss level fights where you've got a much larger object or any sort of user generated content where you're creating large things, they can all now be fully dynamic and bounce light, the, bounce light around in the way you'd expect. So all of the quality advantages we get from Enlighten, uh, but with, now with fully dynamic geometry. Uh, there's one other little thing I want to show you before I end this. If we just go back to daytime, just go through another day-night cycle. Uh, there we go. If I just go into this room here, so this is a, an interior space. There's a little bit of light leaking in from outside, but it's otherwise fairly dark, dark interior. But as I start shooting out these panels here, the daylight will come in. As the daylight comes in, more light bounces around in the world, lights the place up. But also, the effect of the sky dome comes in. So it changes the look inside here to something nice and realistic. So again, you get fully sort of destructible geometry with Enlighten and everything updating, looking the way it should. Okay. So if you want to play around with the demo, uh, Graham will be uh, around the corner very soon uh, and we'll be able to answer more questions and uh, play around with stuff. Uh, just for me to finish off, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the new stuff that we're looking at. 
So I say we, we've been really, we use CUDA as our main research platform. We've been pushing it very hard to see exactly what we can do on, on sort of future looking hardware, what we'll be able to do with, in, in games with the latest graphics cards. And we're looking to carry on that process of, get, of taking our, our CUDA runtime and making it more advanced and removing some of the limitations that we built in from the start uh, based on the, on the sort of console hardware. So we're looking at ways of getting rid of light mapping. Light mapping is a very, very handy optimization. It's kind of essential for current gen console work. But from the artist's point of view, it's a bit of a pain. There's, lots, there's quite a lot of authoring involved, and artists would love to see that go away. And by taking our CUDA runtime, we can increase the probe density, make much more use of probes, and then light a lot more stuff in a fully dynamic way and start to remove this, uh, this light mapping limitation. Uh, we're also looking at uh, ways of getting uh, more local level updates so that the, the amount of dynamism and the amount of an light and update can scale across different hardware platforms. And we're starting to play around with some more interesting uh, volumetric techniques. So how do you combine radiosity with smoke and fog and particle systems? And how do you change color based on, on, how, on, on the sort of the way your the camera angle so that the artist can go in and make sure that just because you've destroyed some stuff, the, the image still has the right sort of color balance to it that the artist was after. Uh, and there's lots of very interesting uh, sort of voxel-based approaches and uh, deferred approaches that we're starting to play around with so we can bring a lot of film-style techniques into, uh, into inline via, via our CUDA runtime. So that's all I had to say. Um, if you have any questions, I saw Graham has now arrived and is around the corner. So you need to come up and ask me or go to our pod around the corner and talk to Graham and we'll be happy to talk to you. Thank you.